Shalom, shalom. I want to welcome you back to the newbie, schnooby, Aleph Bet pre-module. We're going to be looking at a couple new consonants today. I will be introducing you to the vowels, not all of the vowels, but a standard basic set of vowels. And then we're going to try our hand at reading our first monosyllabic words towards the end of this lesson. So let's jump into it. Okay, Dullet is consonant number four of 22. Let's go and read this together. It says, Dullet is pronounced like the D is in door. It can appear with or without the dot, the dagesh, and is pronounced the same in either case. So we covered a little bit of this last session. This dot, and there are many uses of the dot in Hebrew, actually had cataloged over 50 usages of the dot. <laughs> but we're going to be starting with um, the very basic usages of the dot. So dagesh is when the dot appears in the belly of a consonant. And so this is what is known as one of the Begad Kafat letters. Begad Kafat is an acronym, and it just covers certain letters. You can probably hear the D, Begad Kafat. So the D in Begad Kafat represents the letter Dalit. Begad Kafat is not an actual word, and it's not a name. It's an acronym. It's a memory device that someone had put together in the past to help students remember the consonants whose sound can be altered when there is a dot, a dagesh that is found in the belly of the letter. So Dalit in ancient times, when the dagesh was added, it actually had a different sound than when the dagesh was not there. So some of the Begad Kafat letters, I know this may sound a little bit confusing, as that they've come down to us in modern times, the sound is not altered now. We had taken a look at the letter bet in our previous lesson. Bet would be a good example of a Begad Kafat letter. So B, Begad Kafat, that's the first letter of the Begad Kafat collection of letters. And that is a letter that when the Degesh is in that letter, it has a B sound, bet, and when you take the dagesh away and there's no dagesh, no dot in that letter, it has a V sound, as in van. So what you'll see is that some of the Begad Kafat letters, actually three of them, the sound of the letter is altered depending on whether or not there is a dagesh in there. And so, so Dalit is, in fact, a member of the Begad Kafat family. But in this case, um, we have lost the slight difference in the sound it would make, the difference that existed in ancient times. We no longer have that. And so when you see a dalit with a dot, a, with a dagesh, or without a dagesh, it is pronounced diazindor, and that will be consistent uh, throughout the Hebrew Bible. Next slide. Here we have dalit here without the dagesh. I will always include an instructional placard down here in the lower left-hand side that will explain to you, the new student, exactly how you are able to trace and to write these letters in terms of handwriting. You're mimicking the block print found in Hebrew Bibles and in Torah scrolls. So you can see here, there's a number one, and it shows you the direction. So you're gonna begin on the left and go to the right and stop, and then number two, the second part of the dalit is to go down. So this is a very, my line's a little bit crooked there, but this is a very simple letter to write, to duplicate. This is one of the easy ones. Uh, this this letter could easily be confused with the reish, which we haven't had a chance to learn reish. Reish is the exact same thing, except it's rounded here. And so you don't have this little part here that sticks up, that juts out. So that's how we can tell the difference between a dullet and a reish. The dullet has that little portion jutting out and the reish does not. We have a picture here of a door. Dullet represents door. And here we have the Hebrew spelling of the letter dullet. And so dullet, door is actually the pictographic representation, the picture behind the letter dullet. And if you can picture it this way, um, that this is, if you're looking at a, the side of a door or the edge of a door, the lintel of a door, part of a door, uh, this is, you would walk through the doorway this way, 
This would be the right side of the door. This would represent above your head. So you're walking in under it. So that's an archaic picture of a doorway. And just to remember that uh, Dalit is signifies the number four in Hebrew. So Aleph is one, Bet is two, Gimel is three, Dalit would be four. So each of the 22 letters in the Hebrew Aleph Bet are comprised or represent a number, and that is their numbering system. I'm going to move on to our next consonant, the fifth consonant of the Hebrew Aleph Bet, is the consonant He. So He is the fifth of 22 letters. And this is a He. He is pronounced like the H in hair. So you'll notice one thing that's really helpful is just the names of the consonants kind of capture the sound that it makes, with the exception of Aleph, a silent letter, and Ein, a second silent letter. So with the exception of those, what you're going to find categorically is the names that have been given to the consonants. The sound that the consonant makes is hidden in the first letter of, of the name of it, if that makes any sense. And so, hey, as we see here, H makes the ha, ha sound, hair. When it pended onto the front of a noun, it represents the definite article. So you see this throughout the Hebrew Bible when this letter is appended onto a noun and a patak vowel appears beneath it. This, these two sounds together, and a, ha, ha, hasefer, the book. This is the definite article, and that's something you should bear in mind. So here we have our second panel. We have our hay. We've got the method or manner in which you would trace the hay. And I want to remind you that the right link next to this video will always be a student worksheet that can be printed out. And I would strongly encourage you to do so. You will have homework assignments whenever I give a lesson in Aleph Bet. However many letters we covered, those are the letters that you should try your hand at tracing and then doing entire lines worth of that letter so you can get accustomed to forming the letter in the same way that the hebrew bible forms it mentioned in israel today they use cursive a lot and people don't really write in block print though there are certainly signs that have block print and certain published material that would have block print but people generally would write in cursive and you generally don't see people writing in block print they write in cursive but this will assist you, aid you in beginning to get a grasp of, uh, in terms of remembering what the letter looks like, what it consists of, how to form it, that sort of thing. And so we've got a two-step process here. Step one would be beginning at the left and going across and then down in one unbroken stroke. And then the second step of forming the hay right there like that. So very simple letter. This is one of the letters that's in the Tetragrammaton, um, the Lord's personal name known as Yahweh. Jew Jewish people would say Adonai. And so that is yod, yod He vav He. And there's actually two He's that appear in the Lord's name. You might wonder why am I showing you the picture of a juicy, plump turkey for good reason. So in the Hebrew Bible, the word the imperative command to give thanks to the Lord, we see this in the Psalms, is hodu. So if you see down here, this is the word hodu. It appears in the Psalms, many other places in the Tanakh, in the, in the Hebrew Bible. Hodu is a command, it means thank. So hodu ladonai kitov would mean hodu, imperative, a command, give thanks. Ladonai, to the Lord. Hodu Ladonai Kito for he is good. Interestingly enough, the turkey, one of the names for turkey, now there are numer numerous synonyms for turkey that I won't get into, but Hodu, Hodu is turkey. So it's just interesting that we have Thanksgiving Day in the fall. And so the turkey is a very prominent part of most people's Thanksgiving Day celebration. And then in Hebrew, in the Hebrew Bible, hodu is the imperative command to thank. And so somehow when the modern Hebrew was being created and new words were being added, someone made the connection between the turkey, how prominent that is in Thanksgiving, 
And they said, well, let's just call Turkey Hodu. And so we have that connection with the American Thanksgiving holiday with the picture of the turkey here. And then the name of this critter in modern Hebrew is Hodu. And then the ancient word for Hodu is an imperative commanding people to express thanks in that context. Thanks to God for his goodness. Okay, so we've covered the Dalit in the hay today. We're going to move on to introducing the vowels. This will be the most challenging part of our lesson today. And so I just wanted to encourage you at the beginning here, I don't want anybody to freak out when they're being asked to begin to study and memorize the vowel pointings. That will be a process. Now, I could have introduced you just to one or two and taken the slow approach and I will remind you that the goal of this particular pre-module in the alphabet is to teach it to you fairly quickly. I could have taken my sweet old time and had about 30 or 40 different lessons. So people have fine programs that do that. Now, if you need extra practice, number one, you want to get yourself flashcards. The flashcards should include vowel pointings. And I find that people that get their flashcards and begin to use them five or 10 minutes a day within two to three weeks, uh, within two weeks, they'll have their consonants down cold. Within two to three weeks, maybe a little bit more, they'll have their vowel pointings down cold. So that is something you don't want to forget to do. So order them right away, unless you already have them or they're already been, they've already been ordered. And so we're going to go through these. What you're going to find is when we get to the reading practice, I will be reintroducing these as part of the reading. And that's how you'll begin to practice utilizing the vowels that I'm about ready to teach you here. So you notice right off that right up here, we've got A class, E class, I class. So much like English, right? We have A, E, I, O, and U or U. And in Hebrew, we have the exact same thing. And so we have one primary vowel that is considered to be a long vowel, and then a vowel, a set of vowels that are considered to be short vowels. So in each class, we have one of each. So let's just introduce the first one. You'll notice um, this is an aleph. We covered that in our first uh, lesson. That's the silent letter. Now, aleph really has nothing to do with vowels in and of themselves, but Whoever created the chart, actually, I recreated this chart by hand. It took me a long time. But whoever put the chart together initially, they're using Aleph as a placeholder, just so that you can see where the vowels appear, like how they're positioned when, as they correspond to consonants. As you can see, in most cases here, almost all cases, these vowels are appearing beneath the consonants, but not in every case. So we're going to start actually from the left-hand side with the A-class vowels and make our way across the chart. And so this vowel here is called kamates. Kamates says ah, as in spa. Kamates. So when you see a kamates, now an aleph is silent, so if you ever see a kamates beneath an aleph, you just say ah, as in spa. You just make the sound of the vowel kamates. So that's the kamates. Next vowel would be the E-class vowel. And it's interesting, they say E because it's a tserai. Name is tserai, you can try repeating after me, tserai. And the T-S is like at the end of the English word nuts. That's the sound it makes. Um, there is really no letter in the English alphabet that carries the T-S sound. So that will be a little bit different for you. Tserai makes the A sound as in the word play. So you would say A. And I know in some cases, uh, this can have an A sound, and we're just going to deal with that as we come to it. So for now, Biblical Hebrew, Kamait says A, Tseri says A, and then we're on to our next long vowel. Uh, Hirek, Yod, is a long vowel. You'll notice down here, it's just Hirek. Technically, it's Hirik. That's really hard for English speakers to say Hirik. Uh, many people tend to pronounce this as Hirek. Either one is certainly fine. So the Hirek and the Yud go together and form one vowel, and it is a long, unchangeable vowel. 
and it says e. Now yod, we haven't yet introduced that as a consonant. Yod is the tenth letter of the Hebrew alphabet. It is a consonant, but it's one of the consonants that wear a couple different hats. So there are consonants that can function as if they are consonants some of the time. In other times, they can appear connected with vowels and actually be part and parcel of a vowel. So that's what we have here. Hirak, yod, says e, much in the same manner that just hirak alone says e. They both say e. E as in deep. Hirak, yod, says e. So let's, let's rehearse. And you, you can practice this rhyme because this rhyme is actually going to help you for some of our future lessons when we get into the 16 drills. This is something I, I require the students to learn. And it's proven if you can add musical tonality to things you're trying to memorize, you're going to memorize about 80% faster and you're going to have incredible retention. So let's practice together. Kamait says ah. Seri says a. Hirak Yud says e. Okay, so the next long vowel, it would be the O-class vowel. This comes in two forms, long form and short form. This is called cholam. Did you try to say that? Cholam. Cholam makes the O sound as in the word fold. Cholam. So we have cholam kal and cholam chazak or cholam vav. Vav is another consonant that wears two hats. We've not yet been introduced to that. Vav is this letter right here. It's a consonant. But when it appears with a dot on top, it is called cholam vav, and it has the O sound. This is a cholam that has no vav, so it's a light form or without the baggage form. They both say O. Cholam vav says O. And cholam says o. So when, whenever you see these vowels in the midst of a Hebrew word, here they're showing you where it appears. This is one of the vowels that does not appear down below. It appears above. So up here will just be a little dot. And then cholam vav would appear after the consonant. So we would have a placeholder as if it were a consonant. But you wouldn't pronounce like vav as a consonant is pronounced v as in uh, van sound. So this is, you wouldn't make the V sound because it's a vowel. It's a holum vav. Holum vav always says O. Oh. Okay, last vowel for the long vowels would be the U-class vowel or U-class vowel. I say U-class because it makes the sound U. This is called a shurik. Shurik. Shurik says U. So whenever you see a shurik that comes immediately after a consonant, you are going to say oo. It makes the oo sound. Shurek says oo as in the word, the English word moon. Oo. Okay, so let's try this again, going over this. So Kamait says ah. Tseri says a. Chirik Yud says e. Cholam says o. Cholam Vav says o. Shurek says oo. Okay, let's jump down to our short vowels. First short vowel, which appears in the A-class category, is known as patach. You try saying that. Patach. And it has a ch sound on the end. Patach makes the ah sound as in the word spa. Patach says ah. Much as the, in the same way that kemates says ah. So we have two vowels that say ah. We've got two uh, vowels that say e. We've got two vowels that say O. Oh. We've got two vowels that say U. And this vowel here, Segol says A, eh, but sometimes it can actually say A. And so you can see that you've got long vowels and short vowels. And my sense of it, though the jury is certainly out, is that long vowels, there is a slight extension of the sound when you pronounce them, but it is so slight that it is extremely difficult to duplicate. And so most first year language students in the Hebrew Bible are instructed by their teachers to pronounce them the same. And it would only be a native speaker that may be able to tell the difference between the two. And some of the differences we've actually lost in the course of all the centuries. And so 
it is most practical and easy to sound the same, to make the same sound whenever you see both of these vowels. You would just say ah, you'd pronounce it as ah, kamate says ah, patak says ah. The hey, next vowel is in the E class category and it is called sigol. And sigol has, makes an S sound as an egg, a, a, sigol says a. Next one is hirek. So hirek, we've already covered this briefly. It's the short vowel, it is the twin to hirek yod. And it says E as in deep. So we can see we have A, E, E. And in the O class category, we have Kemetz Chatuf. Kemetz Chatuf is the only vowel that is a simple vowel. There are more complex vowels in Hebrew that we'll cover in future lessons, but that you'll notice it has two names Kemetz and Chatuf. Some would call this in modern Hebrew in Israel today, they would call it kemetz katan. And so this is a tricky aspect that there's no real easy answer. You notice these are really the same. They look exactly identical. This one says ah as in spa. This one says o oh, as in whole. So the question, I'm sure it's going to be asked at some point, if you're not already wondering, well, David, you know, how can you tell these vowels apart? How do you know when to say O? Oh? How do you know when to say ah? And really, there are some complex rules that govern that. But the easiest way is a short list of about six or seven Hebrew words, such as the word kol, which means all, chokma, which means wisdom, and a number of others that use a kmeitz chatuf, and whenever you see those words, you'll just need to memorize that, hey, that's a kmeitz chatuf. It's really pronounced this way and not, not with an ah sound. And I've found that that lends itself really well to new students because they just need to learn to say the O oh sound in a short list of maybe six, eight words at the most, and that will be the vast majority of the cases that they'll see as they're studying their Hebrew Bible, and that kind of will settle the deal without getting into complex rules that would be very difficult for you to wrap your brain around at this stage of the game. All right, the last vowel on the short vowels list is kibbutz, kibbutz. So we had shurek here. By the way, I forgot to mention, I have a word picture for shurek, and it is the rack that you put your shoes on. When you come into your house, most people have some type of a rack, could be in the closet or wherever you keep yours. Most people have a shoe rack. And so I am always saying, and I'm sure my kids are tired of hearing me say, shoe rack, put your shoes on the shoe rack. Shoe rack is a Hebrew vowel. And I always say that shoe rack is a Hebrew vowel. And that's a beautiful way of remembering this vowel. All right, kibbutz. It makes the same oo sound, oo as in moon. And so it's three dots. So notice we have a we have a, a one dot here. We've got two dots. We've got three dots that are clustered together. We've got three dots here, but they're in a diagonal line. So you can see the Masoretes, they love dots. They love dots and they love dashes. The whole system of vowels is built on just dashes and da dashes, dots and dashes. So we need to take the time to memorize what these mean. So eventually when we're reading, we can, by sight recognition alone, we would see it and instinctively just make the sound. Just like when you were a little kid and you learned English, you had to memorize certain things and, and finally get to the point where you didn't even have to think it was just second nature. And that's what we're aiming for with the Hebrew vowels. Okay, that pretty much covers that slide. We've got one more slide for today's lesson. And we're going to be doing some basic reading practice here. I realize this is a little bit a little bit daunting because I've got this little section up here that says letters and vowels we've covered so far. And this I didn't say letters and vowels you know already because you probably don't know them. <laughs> you may know the first ones we covered in the last lesson, which would be Aleph, 
Bet Gimel. Today we've covered. Uh, we've covered. Today we have covered Dalit and He. First five consonants out of twenty-two. You remember the Aleph is silent. The Bet, if it has a dot, it has the B sound as in boy. So Bet Gimel has the G sound. Dalit has the D sound. He has the H sound. Let's go through our vowels from right to left, the way Hebrew is read. Cholom Kal says O. Cholom Kal. Kal means light. This is Cholom Chazak or Cholom Vav. Cholom Chazak. Chazak means strong. Or actually, it can, it's also called Cholom Malay, full. It's a full Cholom. So this is not a full Cholom because it's missing the Vav. This is a full home. It's got the dot, the degesh, with a vav. Both say o. Oh. And the next one is kibbutz. Kibbutz says u. Segol says a. Eh. Tseri says a. Eh. And that's, I call that the snake eyes. They're always together, look just like snake eyes. So a is in snake. It would be one way. You can remember it. Snake eyes. Kirek says e. And I know we had shown you um, some longer versions of, of it, and we will see those come up in your readings eventually, but just try to keep things relatively basic here. Kamates or Kamats, you could say that either way. Kamates or Kamats says ah, Patak says ah. O, O, U, A, A, E, A, A. Okay, we're going to try our hand at some basic monosyllabic reading okay from right to left so this is how you do perform a basic reading drill remember aleph is silent so it has no sound of its own when you read hebrew you're going to read the consonant first and then you're going to go down to grab the vowel and then you're going to jump up to the next consonant so it's kind of like up down, up, down, and you know, you're making your way across the page from right to left, but in a zigzag manner. That's the rhythm of how you would read Hebrew. So I'm going to read this for you, and I would encourage you to listen and then to practice on your own. You will probably want to watch this part of the video more than once, is my guess. Also, you're going to be doing your writing practice. And while you're writing and forming these letters, you definitely want to be saying the names of the letters. And as soon as you're able to, also include some of the vowels beneath the letters that you're writing so you can practice sounding out the vowels with the consonants. Okay, so this first one is pronounced ah. Va. So vet in a patak says va. Says Gimel in Patak, says Ga. Dalit in Patak says Da. He in Patak says Ha. Crossing over. Ve. Vet says V. Tsere says A. Put the sounds together. Ve. De. A, so Aleph again is silent. So we have only the sound that the, we have only the sounds that the vowel makes. Hey, Gimel and Itzere says gay. Next line, ah. So Kamet says ah, because Aleph is silent. There's no sound that it makes you, so it can only make the sound of the vowel, the vowel sound, the, the vowel that appears beneath it. And it could even be the vowel that appears after it if it's a shurek. Va. Ga. Da. Ha. So this is he and sigol. The he has an h sound. The sigol has an a sound as an egg. So that would be ha. Va. Ba. Notice there's a degesh in the middle of the bet, so it's going to have a harder sound. Instead of V as in van, it's going to have a B sound. Bet. De. E. Gi. So here we have a hirak. 
Hirek says E and Gimel has the G sound. You put them together, Gimel and Hirek, G, B, E, D, He. So I'll make, a, uh, make mention of something as I am giving you basic reading practices. Now, these are real easy, monosyllabic, but we will get to the point where I'm actually putting a consonant, a vowel, and a consonant. Now, it's still monosyllabic, one syllable. But uh, just to let you know, these are not actual words for the most part. Once in a while, there'll be an actual Hebrew word. So I don't want you getting the idea that the things that you're reading are actual words because of the streamlined approach I'm taking to teaching the Aleph Bet. We're actually going through the Aleph Bet letters in order. And because of that, you're a bit limited. We're limited in terms of actual words that can be formed that are real words in biblical Hebrew. I'll be sure to point out when I see a real word and tell you what the word means. And if I don't do that, you can just assume these are just basically pretend words that are helping you learn how to sound the consonants out correctly, sound out the vowels correctly, etc. Okay, continuing on. This is a cholam kal, a light cholam. This is ho, vo, bo, do, o. Last line. Ooh. So that's a kibbutz. Kibbutz says ooh as in moon, the vowel. Vu. Goo. Do. Who. Okay, here we have a full cholom, cholom alay or cholom chazak. And so this says ho. Vo. Bo. Do. To clear our board. So you can practice this, and I would just go over this again and again. And this page will be in your student handouts, or you can simply pause the video. You can pause the video, get a little uh, pointer if you want, and just go one letter at a time from right to left. And when you get tripped up and stuck, you can listen to the video and see how I would pronounce these, or you could simply go back to your Aleph Bet charts that I gave you at the beginning, where I've given you the sound that each one of these make. And ultimately, you may want to take your iPhone and record yourself reading these. You can even record me reading the letters and giving the sounds that they make, and just going over that recording again and again and again, until you get it down, until you can say all of the names in order, all of the sounds that they make, and also the vowels, the names of all the vowels, the sounds. A lot of people do not take the time to memorize the names of the vowels, and they think that it's not important as long as they know the sound. So the trouble you get into when you're dealing with a mentor or a teacher, or you have a question to ask someone about Hebrew, and you don't even know the name of the vowel, you don't even know how to reference the vowel to the person that's teaching you. That's a real problem. So you're going to be like, oh, yeah, what is that thing with the dots? The dots? You know how many dots there are in Hebrew? So very important. Take the time to learn the names of the vowels. And the sounds of the vowels are actually hidden in the name of the vowel. They, they changed the names of the vowels in modern Hebrew language um, not that long ago, a number of decades ago. And they did it intentionally to make it really easy to memorize the sound that they make by including it in the name itself. And so I thought that was a, a helpful helpful addition to the Hebrew language. Gonna put a cap on it there. So lesson two, we've covered the Dalit, which says D, the He consonant, the fifth consonant out of 22, which has the H sound, Ha. Covered the basic vowels chart. Those aren't all the vowels. So we covered some 10 vowels today. There's seven more that I will be teaching you. And we had a little bit of reading practice. So if you made it all the way through, give yourself a pat on the back and be sure to click on the links to download 
the PDF file containing your writing tablet, where you're going to be doing the practice on tracing and writing out the letters. And we will see you for lesson three. Lahitra Oat. Shalom, shalom. Mm -hmm.